quadruple chocolate soft fudgy pudding cookies. It's a mouthful and 100% worth it. So the original recipe has you making these using a stand mixer, using a paddle attachment, but I'm doing it by hand. So to start off in a large mixing bowl, I have three quarters cup of butter. So that's one and a half sticks. Make sure it's softened, not melted. We will need one quarter cup of white sugar and then three quarters cup of brown sugar. The recipe says light. I always use dark because there's a higher molasses content. So that leads to a slightly chewier texture. We'll get that all creamed together. I'm not gonna go crazy, but I'm gonna make sure all of my sugar is worked into my butter. So once I have my butter and my sugar where I want it, we're going to add two large eggs, but I'm gonna add my eggs in one at a time and get them incorporated one by one. Once I have my first egg incorporated, on to the next. So once I have my second egg all worked in, we're going to be adding in vanilla. We need two teaspoons. I don't usually measure my vanilla, I just kind of eyeball it. And then as you can see, the color is a lot lighter from when we started and that's because it's become more creamed as I've been working in the eggs and the vanilla. So that's why I didn't take all the time at the beginning creaming together my butter and my sugar because I knew I was going to be doing a lot more mixing. So next up, we're going to be adding the first two of our chocolate elements. The first is cocoa powder. The recipe says to use unsweetened natural cocoa powder. I'm using cacao powder just because that's what I have in the house and we need a quarter cup of that. Additionally, we need a box of chocolate pudding mix. We do not want sugar-free and we do not want the cook and serve kind, just the classic instant chocolate pudding. And it'll be either like a 3.7 ounce or a 3.9 ounce box. So we just pour it right into our bowl. Now be careful as you start mixing it into the bowl because all the powder is going to want to kind of go up in a plume so take it slow to start and once the cacao powder or your cocoa powder and the pudding mix start to incorporate you'll notice when you can start mixing faster so once we have all of our chocolate powders mixed in we're going to be adding baking soda so we need one teaspoon of baking soda. Now the recipe has us adding in the flour and the baking soda and the optional salt all at the same time right into our bowl. I don't like to do that just because I like to make sure my baking soda gets the best chance to get evenly incorporated into my dough. Along with that I'm going to be adding an optional pinch of salt so I added about a quarter teaspoon. And it's optional. I used salted butter, but I always add a pinch of salt to just about whatever I make, just because it makes the flavors of whatever you're making pop. It doesn't make your cookies salty, especially when I'm just using a pinch, but it makes the flavors pop. Once we give our dough a good stir, it's time for the flour. Now I'm using gluten-free flour today, just because I'm going to be sending some of these cookies to one of my loved ones who has a gluten intolerance. So I have Bob's Red Mill here. It's just one to one. One cup of the gluten-free flour equals one cup of all-purpose flour. And then I have a little bit of crusties if I need more. So in total, we need two cups of all-purpose flour. And I did need just a little bit out of the new bag of flour. But once you have your flour into your bowl, Go ahead and give that a stir and work your flour in. Give your dough a stir and just stir until all of your flour is mixed in. Make sure you scrape down to the bottom, scrape your sides down, make sure all of your flour is worked in, but you don't need to overmix your dough. Now, as you can see, the dough seems really fudgy. It didn't come together into a stiff ball similarly to how 
like a traditional chocolate chip cookie dough does, but let's give it a taste because quality control is one of my favorite parts of cooking and baking but the fudgy consistency of our dough will come into play. But first, we need to add other two chocolate elements. So I'm going to be splitting my dough into three. Half of my dough, I'm going to leave all chocolate. And then the other half of my dough, I'm gonna split that into half. So a quarter of my dough, I'm gonna put in one little bowl and a quarter I'm gonna put into another little bowl because I'm going to do some special versions of these cookies. So into the first quarter of my dough, I'm going to be adding peanut butter chips. I am going to be adding a heaping quarter cup of peanut butter chips. To my main dough, I'm going to be adding two heaping quarter cups or a heaping half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And then for my final quarter portion of dough, I'm putting in Andy's mints. So I have a box of individually wrapped Andy's mints. Sometimes at your store you can buy just like a chocolate chip bag, but of Andy's mint pieces. My store didn't have any when I went, so I'm just going to be chopping up a whole bunch of Andy's mint pieces. And again, I was going for like a heaping quarter cup and I definitely succeeded. So I'll plop those right into my bowl of cookie dough. And then the recipe calls for five ounces of dark chocolate chopped. The author used 72% cocoa and mine is also 72% cocoa and it has cocoa nibs in the bar. Now my recording time ran out and so I stopped it and then I forgot to press record again. So while you were gone, I chopped up my bar and I put half into my chocolate, chocolate, chocolate bowl. And then I put about a quarter of it into the bowl with my peanut butter chips and the last quarter into my bowl with my Andy's mint pieces. So then we're going to fold in all of our chips and all of our chocolate chunks into each one of our cookie dough bowls. And I did clean, I tried to clean off my spoon with a spatula in between each mix just because my goal was to minimize flavor contamination between doughs. Honestly, I could have just used separate spoons, but this is where I was at. Then it's time to get out your cookie sheet and grease it or line it, whatever you'd like to do. I like to use parchment paper. And the only downfall I find to this recipe is you have to have patience. I'm gonna ball up some of my dough on my cookie sheet and then it has to sit in the fridge for two hours. So I have my handy dandy cookie scoop. It's a must. The original recipe has us balling the dough into quarter cup size cookie dough balls and I wanted more cookies out of my batch so I am using a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop. So whereas originally they are four tablespoon cookie dough balls approximately, mine are just smaller than half that size. I am going to ball up some of the quadruple chocolate, some of the peanut butter chocolate, and then lastly some of the mint chocolate. And then I decided that I had the room, so why not do one more of each? So I just popped my sheet into my fridge and that'll sit for two hours. But additionally, I'm going to put some saran over the rest of my cookie dough just to help it not dry out. And I'm gonna put each of these bowls in the fridge as well so that when my cookie sheet is available, I can just scoop out the cold cookie dough and put it right into the oven. I don't have to wait two more hours before I can pop them in the oven. Now, if you have multiple cookie sheets and you have plenty of room in your fridge, you can just ball up as much cookie dough as you want. So after two hours, preheat your oven to 350 degrees and pop your cookie dough into the oven balls. They're going to cook for about 10 minutes. We don't want to overcook them. Since my cookies are only one and a half tablespoon sized, I'm going for eight minutes. And if you've ever watched any of my cookie videos before, you know that I don't have a cooling rack. I just, I cut open a paper grocery bag, turn it inside out, and that's where my cookie's final resting place is once they're out of the oven. Once the cookies do come out of the oven, what you're looking for 
I know I gave you the 10 minutes for the big ones, eight minutes for the smaller ones. You're gonna wanna look around the edges of your cookies and see if they look set. And that kind of means they kind of look dry just around the edges. And then the author of the original recipe says that she lets the cookies cool almost completely on the cookie sheet. And I let mine cool for uh, about three to five minutes before I gave them a try. As we see, they are very soft and I can hardly break it apart because I, I just kind of smush it. So I agree, let them cool probably at least 10 minutes before you try and take them off the cookie sheet but for you guys i had to give it a taste test and who doesn't like a super warm and gooey cookie so first up i try the peanut butter one and let me tell you it was very fudgy and this goes for all of them so the peanut butter one is great if you're someone who really likes reese's peanut butter cups and then trying the chocolate 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 one again we have the gooey fudgy consistency on the inside and it's very rich. I like that this recipe has us using the dark chocolate and I always use semi-sweet chocolate chips. That's my go-to in cookies just because there's so much sweetness from everything else, the sugar and the pudding mix and two, two types of chocolate. So dark chocolate is great because it doesn't make these cookies sickly sweet. And then finally, I saved my personal favorite for last is the Andy's Mint Pieces cookies. Chocolate and mint is just one of my favorite combinations. You can see the little mint pieces in there. And these, again, they have a nice soft texture. The pudding mix helps to keep them kind of moist and a little bit on the cakey side. But the Andy's mint version, if you like thin mint Girl Scout cookies, if you like chocolate mint ice cream, I recommend making these with the Andes mint pieces. If you would make these cookies, give this video a thumbs up. If you know someone who would love these, go ahead and share this video with them. I will leave the recipe link down below along with how I made them. And if you're interested in any other cookie videos, why don't you check out one of these two videos on screen and I will see you guys there. Thank you for watching.